morning, my friends. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you today? Did you guys enjoy our meetup yesterday? Or if you weren't there, did you enjoy watching it? I think everybody had a great time, and I, I know I certainly did. I was really happy to get to meet anybody that would want to come out and meet me, especially for something as colorful and as holiday spirited as that event. I loved it. Maybe I'll do it every year. I don't know. We'll see. Well, today is the day. Today, apparently, my car is ready. The engine, you guys know, the engine died, and I've been waiting for a few days for them to uh, replace it. I'm really hoping this is the fix. I'm really hoping this is okay, because it's really scary when you spend like $2,000 on a replacement engine, and then while it's still under warranty, it goes kaput. You know, I know I there's nobody really to blame. I mean, you can't blame the mechanic, because the mechanic didn't didn't own the engine to put it in there. The mechanic had to go get it somewhere, and he obviously gains no extra money by spending three days replacing my engine, but it's still scary because another couple of weeks, if that would have happened, I would have been out of a warranty. So I'm hoping that this is the fix. Now after that, assuming all goes well with that, that means once I have my car back, I can get out of here. I can actually start looking at going to Ohio. I couldn't do it while my while my car is there because once it's repaired, nobody wants to hold your car for 10 days. So. I can finally now make a plan to get out of here. But today is actually our 500th vlog. It's our 500th day in a row together. I haven't missed one day, you haven't missed one day. Most of you that started following me later actually went back and watched from day one, which I really appreciate. I honest to God never thought I would make it to 100 days in a row, let alone 500, halfway to 1,000, but thank you to all of you who have taken the ride with me. Now today, I wanted to make it a little bit special. In two accounts, we actually are doing some special Patreon sunglasses today for Lindsay. And Lindsay actually requested something Marilyn Monroe, so I thought, what better to do on the 500th vlog, and for somebody who loves Marilyn Monroe, than to go pay our respects at Marilyn's final resting place in Westwood. So we're actually gonna head over to Pierce Brothers. Uh, my buddy Orlando, who's in town, who makes all my hats and stuff, he was here for the um, the meetup yesterday. He's still here, and we're gonna go hang out. He loves going to the cemeteries, and uh, asked me what I was doing today. I said I'm going to do that, and if you'd like to come, come along. So that's our plan today. Let's go see Marilyn. Days with Jordan the Lion. Hopefully, a fixed car begins now. Well, good morning, fella. Happy 500th vlog, Jaw. We did it. We never have to make another vlog ever again. Today we let everybody know that we're done. I'm kidding. You got another 500 days in you, don't you? Jaw, do you have another 500 days in you? We have a special day plan. Let's get it started. So today, Lindsay Victoria Chapels, these red sunglasses I thought would be the most appropriate for a Maryland vlog. So these sunglasses will be yours. We're gonna go to Pierce Brothers, visit Maryland, and I will put these up to Maryland's grave for you. Just making that old familiar walk to the train station. I was just about to say, 100% of the time that I walk down here, as soon as I get on these escalators to go down, people are coming up, so I always have just missed the train. We're pretty much right here, and we only need to go like two stops. But to walk it, it would. I walked it the other day. It was like 45 minutes. There, I see the lights. All right, we made it to my destination. Now it's just a short walk. Well, there's a memorial sign for the old Route Route 66 that used to ride through here. It says 1935 to 1952. All right, well, we're back in business. He apologized and even said, I took it, I put on 100 miles, taking it to Long Beach to uh, make sure everything was okay. Whew. Well, to his credit, I thought for sure I'd have to pay for at least like the oil and the filter and all that stuff. And when I brought it up, I said, do I owe you anything for that stuff? He said, oh no, Merry Christmas. It, it, I got it, it's all covered. All right. Orlando's picked me up and we're out and about going through Beverly Hills on our way to Westwood. That's a great looking fountain. I love that stuff. So guys, 
How cool is that that Orlando actually came into town for the meetup? This was like no business. It was like literally just for the meetup. Well, we actually showed up over at the cemetery and uh, they said, which service are you here for? And we're like, we're actually kind of just uh, touristing this one. And they said, we have two services, so you have to come back in two hours. And uh, I totally understood because you could tell that every single parking space inside the cemetery was taken. Oh, this place is great. It's called the Gypsy Cafe. And I need a coffee. I almost never come into a Starbucks, but I have a gift card, so I definitely should. What the heck? You're probably wondering if I ditched Orlando. No, there's just nowhere to park around here, so he dropped me off so I could get a coffee and he's gonna circle back around. Someday I'll have to, uh, I'll have to vlog the Hammer Museum. It's a pretty interesting place inside. Now we've actually killed that two hours, so I think by the time I get my coffee, we can actually head back over to the cemetery and it'll be two o'clock when they told us to come back. Well, we've made it. We're here to visit and pay our respects to the late, great, probably, in my opinion, maybe, I think the most beautiful woman that I've ever seen, Marilyn Monroe. Well, here we are. We've made it. Right here is the final resting place of Marilyn Monroe. And this is Hugh Hefner, who recently passed away. I mean, what was it, like a month ago? And I mean, Maryland's like a really sad story. I mean, I have a little bit of, I guess what you'd say, inside information. It's just, it's sad because, you know, she she will always go down as probably the most well-known actress of all time. I mean, or at least the most alluring sex symbol of all time. And yet, it basically started out as, you know, she was an orphan living in foster homes, being abused. And then when she basically could get her first chance to get out, she did. She got married and... Like Shelly would tell me, because Shelly and Marilyn were best friends, she actually said, you know, in that day, if, you know, when the country was at war, she said it was very noble to marry a soldier. Everybody did it. Shelly did it. She said Marilyn did it when she was Norma Jean. And then eventually when they realized that wouldn't work out, Marilyn went off and pursued her own career. And we would know her as, as I said, pretty much the most well-known actress of all time. There's nobody that doesn't know the name Marilyn Rowe. And the ending was just too sad, you know, because Marilyn was... Her last couple of years in her life, she was experiencing a lot of what people would describe as bipolar. Even Shelley would tell me, she said, you know, originally when Marilyn started acting, she knew that she was just this beautiful bombshell and she never really saw anything past that. And Shelley said, I was the one that told her, you can be taken seriously. If you go to the actor's studio and you study with Lee Strasberg, they'll take you seriously. He'll make you a good actor. And so Shelley would take uh, Marilyn to the actor's studio in New York City when they lived there. And she actually said that Marilyn almost never would even participate. She said she always felt like she was out of her league. And she said eventually, the Strasbergs would basically take a vested interest and start personally helping Marilyn. Paula would be on just about, probably the last five or six movies that Marilyn would make. And they would say that, you know, Paula had this overwhelming presence when she was there because they said that she had this ability to basically make all the actresses and actors that she worked with completely ignore the directors and only take direction from her. And they said in Marilyn's last picture, something's gotta give that she was making with Dean Martin. That was basically what the downfall was, was that, Everyone knew Marilyn wasn't much of a drinker, but it was pretty well known that she was using pills and they were all prescription things. She had two doctors that she checked in with every single day and it just became a situation where she couldn't cope without it. And even to the point where, you know, Fox, who she had her longtime contract with, they didn't even put her in movies for the last two years. They would loan her out. She wouldn't even make pictures for Fox and then when they ran into major financial issues because they were doing uh, Cleopatra and that was just running over budget they said you know we have to put Marilyn in something we have to capitalize on her and my personal thought is they did it because she was getting old she was 35 getting ready to turn 36 and they knew her sex symbol image probably wouldn't stand up too much longer so 
they actually assigned a producer to look after her before the movie even started to make sure that she would be okay to do it. And when he went out to her house one night, he said she had basically overdosed and was laying on her bed the way they found her dead months later. She was like that that night. And he told the studio she's not prepared to make a movie and they wouldn't, they made her do it anyway. George Cooker didn't want to make the movie with her, but kind of did. And then once they started filming, she missed over half the production. In 30 days, she only showed up for 13 days of it because they said she would be paranoid. She would have um, people People on set watching and the producer actually said one day he got a call from Marilyn saying Sid Charisse is taping her boobs and he's like how do you know that you're not even on set and she said I have people watching the set and so if she felt like something wasn't going her way she would call in ill to the point where even Dean Martin would get so mad that he didn't want to work with her anymore he said that he was like sick one day on set and so she said well I can't be here tomorrow if he's sick so they ended up calling a meeting and saying they were going to fire her and her doctors went in and met with the studio and said I can guarantee that she'll be dropped off at the studio and that she'll be there to work. The next day she didn't show up to work so they all had a meeting and according to George Cooker he just said I can't work with her anymore let's just end the movie the movie's over. So Fox ends up canceling the movie just decides they're just going to scrap it because it's already a million dollars over budget and already half, you know, like they've already missed. They got to a point where they'd filmed everything that you could possibly film without her and they literally needed her for every single day. So once they canceled it, Marilyn kind of started taking that a little bit seriously. And the whole reason they really said they canceled it was because she had been approved to go to President Kennedy's birthday celebration where she was going to sing. And at the last minute, they kind of said, we're so far over budget, we, we just can't allow you to do that now. And she decided to go do it anyway. And so once they fired her from the picture, she ended up... Um, basically taking a little bit of time off, like a week or two off, and then she decided she really wanted to make this movie, so she went and she found, um, contacted all the actors and got them all to sign a petition basically saying that they would come back to work. And she um, even agreed, surprisingly, to keep Paula Strasberg off set, which, like I said, Marilyn had made like her last five or six pictures with Paula on set, giving her 100% direction. And now she was willing to do it without it. And they agreed to make the movie, and then shortly thereafter, Marilyn passed away um, in her sleep. Now, according to you know a lot of the gossip, they say that the Kennys probably had something to do with it. Some say the mafia had something to do with it. There's always there's always a story like that the studios had something to benefit. I mean, they even said you know. If, if anything happened to Marilyn, they needed to make sure it was something that the insurance would cover. So when she ended up dying, of course, when I was friends with Shelly, who was her best friend, Shelly Winters, I asked her, I said, what do you think happened? And she said, honey, I talked to her right before she died. And she said, I told her, I said, you're sad, you're depressed, get out of there. Quit the movie, come to New York City, stay with me, I'll take care of you, we'll get you back into the actor studio, you'll be fine. She said, that's the last I heard from her. And then she said, then, you know, a couple of days later I show up at work and she said one of the people working on the movie, one of the crew members said, hey, your girlfriend died. And I said, what? What are you talking about? She said, your girlfriend, Marilyn, she died. And I said, so what do you think happened? And she said, I think we were all addicted to pills back then. And she said, I think they put her on a pretty heavy dose of pills. And I think that she took some, fell asleep, woke up, and took more. And she said, and in those days, everybody knew, even though Marilyn wasn't a heavy drinker, she did drink champagne a lot. And at that time, we really didn't know that you shouldn't mix pills and champagne. So Shelly always felt like she just basically inadvertently took too many pills. But some other people say that, you know, Marilyn was extremely bipolar and paranoid in this time because she was turning 36 and she knew that it wasn't too much longer after that that people that were sex symbols didn't get work. And that was the sad ending of Marilyn Monroe. Now, you see the rose here. I don't believe that is still part of the Joe DiMaggio agreement, but... When Joe DiMaggio was still alive, he would have roses sent to Maryland every day. 
and uh, always had fresh roses out here. And some even say that part of the reason that Marilyn really took a downward spiral right at the end was because she loved these, you know, she, all the people that she felt like early on in her life she would never have anything in common with were the kind of people she married. She married the greatest baseball player in the world and she married one of the greatest playwrights in the world and that marriage with Arthur Miller had ended after four years and it took a toll because she wanted to be a mother. She wanted to have kids and it never happened so it's kind of sad. The final resting place of Marilyn Monroe and the man who I guess you could credit for launching Playboy off of her off of her photos. And so, Lindsay, since this vlog was requested by you, your sunglasses are going to go right here in Marilyn's grave. Now, just to give you a little bit of an example as to how beautiful Marilyn was at the end and how much star power she really did have, in the last picture that she did, they did a scene where she was going to be swimming in a pool, and they had actually given her a a bodysuit, a nude bodysuit, and she said, no, nope, I don't want to wear it. She had done a few takes with it, didn't like it, and said she wanted the set cleared and that she wanted to do this scene naked. And so she actually had her favorite photographer, her favorite set photographer, come to the set and allowed him to take some photos. And after they were done filming for the day, she saw some of the photos and she actually said, well, let's see Elizabeth Taylor top this, because at the time, Elizabeth Taylor was like her, probably her biggest rival at Fox as far as being the number one star, or the number one star led at Fox. And lo and behold, a week later, that picture of Marilyn Monroe sitting, or standing next to the pool on that set was on the cover of a magazine. And she was, once again, considered the most beautiful woman in the world. And since we're right here by Don Knotts, Lindsay, I thought maybe you wouldn't mind having your glasses on Don Knotts' headstone as well. Now over there you can see Orlando's doing his own vlogging over here, which is kind of fun. But right before we leave, I said, you know what? If I'm going to put Lindsay's sunglasses right there next to Marilyn, right there next to Don Knotts, I'm pretty close to Betty Page, I think Betty should be included as well. And there she is. Right next to Alan Melvin, there's Betty Page. And a little bit of a tie-in is when she passed away, Hugh Hefner covered the cost of her burial and services. All right, and we're gonna get out of here because we've done all of our vlogging, but I did want to mention one other thing. Right directly in front of us is, well, that's where the mortician, that's where all the services and everything are held here at Westwood. And if you remember, what was it, three weeks ago when I was up there vlogging Errol Flynn's Mulholland Farm, I told you the story of how Raoul Walsh came out to Pierce Brothers and paid the attendant to quote-unquote borrowed John Barrymore's body to go prank Errol Flynn. That happened right here. I'm gonna walk us up to that door and show you. So it was actually right here behind me where they would have done all that. Now, one thing I want to include in that is that I have a little surprise for you guys. In the future, there's another John Barrymore unbelievable story vlog coming your way. Well, I decided since we're on vlog 500 and I wanted to make it memorable, we're also going to go over to, even though you can only see the gate, we're going to see the gate of the last home that Marilyn Monroe lived in and where she died. Now, though this was her last house officially because it's where she died, I wouldn't necessarily call it her home because she'd only lived there for a few months before her death. She'd actually lived in an apartment before that and has various addresses all over Los Angeles. Well, here we are, Fifth Helena Drive. And this is the one and only way into where Marilyn lived. So she would have had to have driven down through here to get home. Right at the end of this cul-de-sac. Well, here it is. One, two, three, oh, five. And the gate door is actually open. So they're probably showing the house, but this was her final property. 
Look at that. It's pretty surreal. It's pretty sad, actually. Yeah, man. Oh, somebody lives there now. Well, Orlando, we just saw Marilyn's <laughs> final resting place and her final house where she passed away, where her body would have been brought from the ambulance or the hearse or, you know, whatever, the coroner's car would have been driven right down through here. Pretty powerful, man. What do you think? I think it was even more memorable that when we showed up, the, obviously yeah. somebody lived there, but that the gate door was open, that you could actually yeah, see some of the house inside. There were packages there. Yeah, there were packages inside, so somebody <laughs> obviously lives there, but somebody lives there. Yeah, surreal. Sure. I love her neighborhood. So Orlando and I were out just kind of doing some extra vlogging since he's here and he wants to see some stuff and we're basically up where Michael Jackson died and as we're driving around I go, you gotta pull off, let me see that. Because this whole wall over here is all religious Buddha statues and they pretty much go all the way down, can you see that? I'd love to know who lives here. And they're all pretty much different. I've walked, you know, past about seven or eight of them. There's a few more coming up, as you can tell. But every single one of them is just a little bit different. I love it. So as Orlando and I are calling it into the day and we're heading back up to Hollywood, I said, you know what? There's one last thing I'd like to include in this Marilyn Monroe vlog. So we're headed there now. Well, we're back here on Hollywood Boulevard to finish it up. And there's Marilyn Monroe. Hope you enjoyed this, Lindsay. Now let's go end this back at my apartment. And there's the Scientology Christmas Village. Well, all right, gang, I have pretty much finished up the vlog for the day. And I decided I'm gonna take off. Um, I'm gonna go to Ohio tomorrow. So I'm gonna actually go over and get a haircut now and uh, start packing my bags. We're gonna take off in the morning. So Orlando and I filmed a little bit of something extra since I knew I, um, you know, I was thinking today, I was like, yeah, I wanna fly out. So let's do something so you don't have to just see a travel day. So you'll have a little bit of something to watch tomorrow and uh, you will actually get to meet my two best friends, probably the two oldest friends I have. Uh, one of them's going to actually pick me up at the airport, my friend Seth, and uh, he used to be the artist for my band, like way back when. We've been really good friends since I was in high school, and then um, my friend Adam, who, well, you'll meet Adam. Adam is, both guys are artists, and both are really, really awesome people. I, I haven't seen Adam in probably four years, and I haven't seen Seth since the last time I was home, which was probably over a year ago, so this will be fun. Let's go get a haircut. I no doubt need a haircut, and I figure 500 days in a row, I kind of deserve something today. Let's do it. All right, well, we're done. Do I look any different? He pretty much scalped me. I said just to trim it around the sides and take like an inch off the top, and he pretty much shaved my head, so I guess I'm gonna have to deal with that in Ohio. Guess that Belgium hat's gonna come in handy. Well, that's it, my friends. That's the end of the vlog. 500 days. I hope you guys enjoyed this special tribute to Marilyn Monroe. I just wanted to thank each and every one of you for watching me every day and uh, making me a part of your day. 500 days sounded like a lot when I started. I never thought I would get here. Now it's like the tip of the iceberg. It's like so much more to come. Thank you for watching. See you all tomorrow and tomorrow we head off to Ohio. Have a great night. Goodbye.